Alex, your mic is muted. I think he's looking for the microphone button. We got new software. I think I told you that last week that we were getting new software. Well, we got it. And the mic button is in the wrong place. So as they say, hi, everybody. I'm Alex. Welcome back to the Astro Imaging channel for this Sunday. Um, tonight, we're going to have a special show. I got I to gotta start back about two, three months ago where my um, nephew, had a son, his first baby boy, and he named it Atlas. And little did I know that reading in on the internet web that there was a comet Atlas coming. And I thought, wouldn't it be really cute for him to have a picture of Atlas the comet as well as Atlas the baby, which he had already like 8,000 pictures of apparently. So I decided to go out and take a picture of that. And then I realized I don't know how to take a picture of a comet very well. I've taken a few, but never easily. And I know that PixInsight has ways to process comets. And I know that Deep Sky Stacker has ways to process comets. I know there's good things to know about taking comet pictures and you really should know them. And I said, everybody on the Astro Imaging channel is gonna have to learn how to do that. And, I said something about, hey, guys, remember, this is your Astro Imaging channel, and we really want you to participate in it. We want you to volunteer to put on the presentations. Don't leave it to Tolga and Eric and me and the, the people we can scrounge up to do it. You know, we, we've been doing a pretty good job getting people, but we want more of you to do it. And so Brian Clement hears this and he says, you know, I'll take a chance at that. I'll 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 give it a go at that. I, and I really appreciate it when you guys volunteer to help us out with something like that. So anyway, Brian Clements is going to come here tonight. Thanks, and he's gonna, Pardon? Thanks, Alex. <laughs> okay, he's gonna he's gonna be coming here. And, and just hang on for a minute. I got a few more announcements to make, Brian, before we go there. Uh, I got to start sharing my screen though, if I can figure out how to do that with the new software. And. Um, I got to push that button and this button down here and I'm sharing my screen. It goes around in a circle like that for a while and my screen happens to have me on it right now. So um, uh, this is the astroimagingchannel.org. It's our new website. And we like you to go to our new website every now and then. You can get all sorts of cool stuff here, including the contact part. And on the contact part, you can write to Tolga and me and Eric and Molly, and you can say, hey, I'd like to present. I'm just a beginner. I don't know a whole lot, but I would like to tell you a few things I've learned in my first month of astroimaging. Or if you've been at it for a long time, you might want to write about, you know, I've learned a whole new way to process so and such, and I want to tell people about it. So please do that. It you don't have to be a great presenter. All you got to do is love your stuff. Some of our most popular programs are people that are just starting out and want to show them stuff. You can go back and see our past shows here. Not all of our past shows are here yet. We're going to try to figure out how to get that done. We had our website got broken into a while ago and we had to rebuild it a little bit. But here's, you know, you can get some of the latest programs and you can always go to YouTube to get more of our latest programs. And um, a, 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 a calendar, one of the most important parts is the calendar. Bryant, as you can, Bryant today is going to be presenting. Uh, Dennis Vita, Bob Massey, and Peter uh, Asher, Ashman is going to be coming to talk to us next week about how we can participate in um, some um, science, you know, citizen science using some relatively inexpensive webcams and some software, Raspberry Pi you can keep track of all the meteors coming over your house. And well, I'm not going to, you know, that's what's going to be next week. And then Manny's going to tell us about how he's built in his observatory. And then the week after that, we go back to citizen science when Robert Zellum tells us about how you can use your current astronomical imaging stuff, the stuff you use to take the pretty pictures that we talk about every week to find exoplanets. He's got the programs all worked out for you and everything, and he's trying to set up a network of people who are willing to do that. Uh, then we're going to have somebody come back, Richard Traub, also volunteered, just like Brian did. He says, yeah, I can do something like that. And he's going to tell us about processing comets in PixInsight. 
So uh, Richard Wright, Dale Gant, Sebastian Garcia from Telescopius, and then Issa Mohammed is going to be telling us about electronic assisted astronomy, which should be really important for those of you who want to try to put on those virtual star parties. At any rate, we've got a lot of good shows coming up, but tonight's big show is from Brian Clement. So I am going to stop sharing my screen. And I am about to turn it over to uh, Brian. And Brian, yeah. you take over. OK, buddy? OK, thanks, Alex. OK. OK, right here is the part one of the of how uh, the Deep Sky Stacker works with the stacking of Comet. So uh, if you want to just take a little time and read through it then you'll understand then we're going to play the video for you the tutorial so okay so i'm gonna play the t the video right now and i'll uh, navigate right through it okay Right now I'm opening up the Deep Sky Stacker, as you can see. And here is uh, where you want to pay attention because it's not like you're stacking regular RGB or just a regular one-shot color camera. But you, you'll you see where I go with the arrow where I'm lining up settings right there. You want to go to stacking settings, and that's where your comet shows up. And there you have three options. Now, uh, the bottom option, they says, oh, yeah, it'll be clear, it'll be sharp. Uh, that's not really true, <laughs> at least with the model cam with the, with the using filters. Uh, and I heard someone with the CMOS camera had uh, the, I mean, uh, one shot color had uh, the same issue. So th the best thing to do is just use uh, number one and two and you combine them together into one image after in uh, Photoshop or you can use another of your choice. Right now I selected comic stacking and what that does is it isolates the comet but what happens is you get all these star trails and you'll see in the later on as I as it goes along. So right now what I'm doing is I'm stacking all my uh, red filters and with this, I just use darks and uh, flats. I, I was using a 1600 uh, Pro, MM Pro, and I just never felt the need for the bias or the dark flats. I always ran into some kind of issue. So anyway, <laughs> to keep it short, <laughs> and uh, I speed through this, right? You'll see me, I'll just put a bunch in. So you're just stacking the way you would regularly do right now, loading it up. Okay, so... So the files are still getting in. Okay, so now I'm just gonna fast forward a little bit to around 340, save some time. Now we're, we should be done soon, stack, putting everything in. Okay, right now I was just double checking out all my frames in there. You wanna have all your calibration frames in. Now this is important thing, check all. 
and you want to see where the yellow thing is, I'm going to go to stack checked pictures first, first, I think. Oh, yeah, you got to highlight a picture. That's what you do. And you right click that comet thing. And it brings up a gray screen. Make sure all your images are checked, your flats, your darks, and everything. Then to register this light frame, you want the middle one. You want to register all the light frames. I tried both ways, and <laughs> this one, the middle one works. Okay, so this is actually a tutorial that I narrated. That's why you don't hear some sound sometimes. Okay, so I'm um, click OK, register. Just like you would normally do right now. And in here, I fast forward to, uh, I go to the last uh, blue screen, the, the blue uh, filter. Okay, now you can see the comet thing that shows up. And right now I'm just going through all my frames, making sure there's no bad ones in. And now I'm going to mark, you, you must have a reference frame. Some I saw some people saying you don't need it, but you do. So the choose I chose the highest one, which is usually the red. Okay. Now here's uh the not, wouldn't not the tricky part, but let's see. Okay, now you you can't see the comment now. So what I'm doing is I'm lightening up the background in DSS until it appears. Now you may have to zoom in or you may have to play with those sliders a lot more. But I don't know but you, if you can see it now, but it's right there. So what I'm gonna do is just get it a little bit more visible. I mean, that was a little too much. <laughs> Okay, and now if you look in the top uh, left, like, uh, box, that's, like, the ultra zoom thing on it. And also your uh, mouse wheel, when you scroll in, that zooms in and out with DSS, in case you didn't know. So by looking at that little white box in the top left, I can hover over the center. You want to get the nucleus around there. It doesn't have to be perfect, though, but you can see it right there. Um, right now, I'm pointing out when I was showing it right there. And then you shift, then you click. Remember, shift and click. Until you see that purple thing. Now, this is the most important part. After, on the disk, you hit save. Now, watch the numbers when you see the stars right here. You'll see a C go right next to it. As soon as I click it. Just, there it is. See. So now I go through a few more of these just to, so you can see what happens when DSS tries to uh, automatically pick one, but it's really not the comet. That's what you got to be careful of. So I'm zooming in. See, it shows uh, the, the other one, <laughs> the start. This was when Atlas was at its, one of its brightest, I believe. Okay. And I'm just choosing a, a random one here, I think. Okay, yeah, I'm doing another one. 
And you remember, you get, with each uh, color, you got to do all the. You got to go through this procedure. It's painful if you have a lot of frames. <laughs> but it's not too bad. The results are worth it. Okay, now I just go to another color, I think. Okay, then I and remember I always hit save. So I'm just gonna fast forward just a little bit. So now I'm working with uh, the green color. That's gonna be a little tougher than the red sometimes. Since the red usually brings out the the comet more. For some reason. Okay. Actually, what I'm doing now is let me. I'm sorry. I'm going to go back real quick. An important part. Eight forty six. Okay, I thought that was it. Maybe it was after that. Okay, so I'm gonna fast forward. I think you get it now, right? <laughs> okay, now I'm getting ready to, you wanna uncheck all now after you completed all that. And now you see how I hit uncheck all? This is the part I wanted to get to. Now this is where it becomes different. Right now I'm stacking the red channel so I'm checking all the red frames. And now you, you go to stack checked pictures, not register check pictures. Some people get to that regardless. <laughs> and now here you want to go to that. And you could read right there, it says you're trying to create a comment image. So you check that. You don't want to check the other two. Like th that would be if you weren't doing a comment. And you click OK. And now it stacks them. Okay, this I believe I fast forward through it pretty fast. Okay, that was the end. I did all the colors, just in case you're wondering. Now, you're going to see this screen. And it looks kind of strange. <laughs> but you can see the isolated comet there. And all of those dots there, those are the... When I was using the different color filters of the star trailing. So now I'm saving each one. And I'm going to put it in a folder that I call uh, isolated comet after this. Yep. I did, uh, that's just the first stack I did DSS, stack one. I did that th before I did this tutorial. So I'm doing two. Now I create the folder. And you're essentially going to have two folders that you're going to be working with in Photoshop. So this is... 
I just created that folder for the next one. Okay, now this is where you want to pay attention again. Uncheck all. Go back to uh, the red. You want to check all the red. Just making sure nothing else is checked. You want to go to that one again, stack. You want to go to recommend settings. Actually, you want to go down here. I'm sorry, stacking parameters. And there's common again. You want to get a standard mode now. And what that does is it, is, uh, it isolates the stars like you would regularly do with this. But it's going to leave a, a smear of a comet that later that you got to get rid of. And i show you how on Photoshop. So this one you would choose probably the first option. The signal clipping. Okay, then I stack that. Okay, I'm gonna fast forward while this. Okay, now, when I was talking about the folders before, right now it's done stacking all the colors. So save the picture. You see how when I created the folder before, now I put all the star background ones in that folder. Okay, so now I'm gonna move these folders, blue, the blue, green, and red one. I'm gonna call it, I believe, isolated comet. Just to keep track of it easier. Okay. So now uh, we're done doing working with the uh, DSS and uh, we're going to move on to uh, Photoshop. Now you could use your another program for this, but I mean, whoever you uh, deal with it, but this is just one that I'm using. There's the two folders. It doesn't matter which one you start with, but I, I like starting with the stars first. And also you notice with this, with the bit rate, it maybe it look fuzzy, the image, the real image is though it's pretty uh, high detailed. It's just from the compression when I made this. So this part, you probably know what to do. You're just merging it into uh, one picture, the RGB. Or if you have a one-shot color, a DSLR, you wouldn't have to do that. So now I'm combining them all into an RGB. Pacing the red. And in the middle, you can actually see the comet smear. <laughs> Blue. And right here, I'm just doing like a little stretch. Thank you. 
Hey, Brian, there's a question over on YouTube. You got a moment? Okay. Oh, yeah, sure. Let me pause this. Yep. I'm here. I saw you had a large number of subs. So how, how long were the subs and how many of each ones did you start with? Oh, why, why do you choose that length of sub? Oh, the way, first of all, with choosing the subs, I, I was using uh, Sequence Generator Pro. And on there, it has, a, you can see the mean ADU or the medium. And with the gain, I was using 150 gain. And now using 100, for, that's 150 gain for the blue and uh, green channels. Now with that gain, you shouldn't fall below around 1400 to 1500. So you want to maintain, uh, you know, the it'll say like 1550 or 1600. Now, now that's good. Now, if, just say if it's lower than that, then you want to up the exposure time. And now if it was uh, much higher than that, then you want to lower the exposure time. But I also used a higher game because it is a comet and it was moving, uh, you know, faster than the stars. So I think the I did 45 seconds. It may show you on the, the tutorial, but that's how I did that. And the the red I used at 200 gain. Now, when I was using 200 gain with the 1600 mm, the ZWO. They say you should try to get a mean ADU of over 1800 and that should be the minimum. So I was shooting for that number and I believe it was, I was doing a minute until it reached it. Now everyone, sky, all the skies are different. Like with sky glow, you have lights, all that affects the ADU. But th this is just, the ADU is just calculates the the range of the camera and a lot of other technical stuff I don't really know too much about, but <laughs> that that's pretty much it though. That's how I judge uh, on how long I should set the exposures to. Okay, thank you. Yep. Okay, I'm gonna resume here. Okay, right now I'm just going to fast forward just a little bit. I'm just bringing out the stars. But I'm going to show you how to, I got rid of... Uh, oops, I'm going to go back. Okay, now what, I'm just really trying to stretch it just to see uh, where the smear is. So I'm not really trying to uh, bring anything out yet. But as you can see in the middle... That's what uh, Deep Sky Stacker, uh, that's the comet move that moved right through there. So now, see, there it is. So now the goal is to uh, get rid of that and to, to maintain the star background. Now, there is a, a cheap way you can actually, uh, if you have, like, if you plate solve, you can take uh, the same sky patch uh, the night before, night after, if it's clear. <laughs> but I didn't want to do that. As I'd rather do it this way. So now here, I'm trying to figure out which tool to use from Photoshop to get rid of it. So you'll see me attempt different approaches here. Now this one, I believe I'm going to go to, okay, levels. I'm just trying to balance it out. And also, I'm not trying to make it perfect, this guy here, because I'm trying to isolate the, that, see how that's blue from, from the sky, because it makes it a lot easier when you blend it in. Okay, now this is one of my favorite selective colors. It works sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. You just got to play with it. You can see the difference that it does.
And it's always good with Photoshop to move the sliders back and forth so you can adjust the image. You can see how far it goes and how far it doesn't go. Now I'm going to do just another one of my favorite ones. Replace color. Now this doesn't always work, but see where I clicked in, in the middle right there, you can see what, or the patch that we're trying to get rid of. It's kind of like a threshold, like what I mean preview with that. So now with that color that I selected, I'm going to try to match it. You see, I'm still having an issue there trying to trying to blend it in. It's being a little finicky. <laughs> it's starting to look a little bit better, as you notice. Okay, so now I believe I'm going to use the magic wand. Yeah, magic wand tool, which is another great tool. And I set the tolerance at 2. And if you don't know what the tolerance is, uh, I mean, the lowest level is the less forgiven and the highest is the most. So if you had like a tolerance 100, it would select everything pretty much. Okay, also right now, let me just, uh, well, actually, I don't have to do it yet, but dust and scratches. What that does is wonders. It's one of the best plugins. It's like a smart, they call it a smart filter, where it uh, blends things in and it tries to match. It works a little bit here, but it works better on other applications with Photoshop. As you can see, with it on and off. And just play with these sliders going left and right. And magnify so you can see exactly. So now let's look at it. It's getting better. I'm still not happy with it. So now I move on to, let's see. Yeah, it's still there. I go back to select the color again. See, that's not doing anything really. Okay, so now I'm scratching my head. <laughs> what should I do? Now I'm going to my favorite, the failsafe one, camera raw filter in Photoshop. That's one of the best filters. It can do a, a lot. You still want to go too crazy with it, though. So now I'm just going to go to the extremes and see what it does. And you can notice the histogram on top when I do that. So I'm trying to see what, where the point is that I got to uh, eliminate it at. Then I moved the black slider down a little bit. The clarity. Okay. Starting to get better now. I think I'm still not happy here. <laughs> then I do something else. That's right. There was too much red in it. Now I add a little more blue back, I think, or something. There we go. Now it's disappearing. And all those pixelated things, that's just from the program. 
if it seems fuzzy. still there so now I'm using the spot healing brush which that takes surrounding pixels as well so you just draw around like that and now don't even worry if you go over stars because the comet it actually wiped out stars so when you touch up you can actually you can rubber stamp a star in there too as well and it's better to go in not not a particular pattern, you know, like a straight line or a circle, but try to make it like odd so it blends in better. So now I'm going to, oh yeah, the gradient exterminator, which is probably one of the best things ever. <laughs> If you don't have it, you should get it by RC Astro. I think it's fifty dollars. So now I just did the the inverse of that. And I'm gonna try the spot he healer again. And now you don't have to get it perfect because don't forget you're gonna merge the actual comet in that area. So that blue is going to be, even though it's a little bit blue now, it's going to be uh, washed out by the, the comet's glow. Okay, so there you go. Okay, and... I think I'm going to leave it for now. That's what I said in the tutorial. And here I was talking about how you can rubber stamp a star and just place it in there since stuff was erased by the comet when it uh, merged with DSS. So now we're going to the, we're opening up the isolated comet now. There's that version. This is the fun part. Now this is, you're going to notice the filter dust and scratches is unbelievable in here. It'll work for many different applications for astrophotography too. Okay, I'm combining it. Just fast forward a little. So this is, I named that isolated combined. So I'm just gonna bring out the levels. You don't, you probably know this. You know, I'm gonna stretch it. I don't wanna, I gotta be careful because it's the green glow. You don't wanna lose it. And uh, working with the, this comment, you can't use the Asa La Visa green filter either. <laughs> So it's a little tricky. So now I'm just playing with the levels. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to get rid of all these uh, streaks. Those are from the different color transitions when I was changing filters. They're the star trails. So like in a one shot color, you would just see like a, a gradient color, like a rainbow type thing. As I stretch it more, they get brighter. See with that glow right there in the middle, that doesn't appear when I was working on the screen. That's just from when the video was being made with the compression.
like I said before, you want to be careful that you don't lose the the actual glow of the green. And you want to try to separate it from the background as the best you can. Okay, how are we going to get rid of these now, huh? Right now I'm using the polygon uh, lasso tool. It just like clicks in like squares or whatever. Now here I use dust and scratches. This is why I call it the best filter. Now I'm going to go to the extreme. And you'll see where it was. See that? Watch, I'll make it disappear now. It'll blend right in. And then you can zoom in to check. You always got to be careful also about uh, it may leave like a solid color. But if you're careful enough, you can actually get it to blend in. Like even better. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's there there was a solid bar there, but now it's blending in better. Now it's totally hidden just about. Okay, so you don't have to do all these bars, but you want to do it within the certain radius of the glow of where the comet the comet glow and you want to go outside a, a bit. That uh, you'll see in a few steps after this. So I'll show you a few things how I do this, and then I'll move on to the next uh, step to speed it up a little. Dust and scratches again. There's there it is. Now when I move the, move the threshold down, it disappears. Then you adjust that to blend it even further. And every one is different too. Not everything is threshold all the way to the left. It all depends on what you're dealing with. Now right here, uh, well, not this one, but uh, the one after this I'll show you. And filter, dust and scratches again. There it disappears. Okay, so I think you're getting the point there. So actually right here, this is where I wanted to be careful because it, the tail is right here. It shouldn't be an issue, but I just, I stop it, right? You'll see how I draw this. Go down. To about right there. Because I don't want just like a line just running all the way through it just in case if it didn't blend in properly. And once again, dust and scratches. And after I do this part, I'll fast forward it to, uh, to show you how to get rid of the rest, like real easy. See that down there? I gotta get rid of that. I do it the same way, so. This one I zoom in on. I'm trying to be very careful with right here now. See, there it is. Okay. So now that 
I showed you the basic stuff. I'm going to fast forward uh, to how to get rid of uh, the uneven background now after I get rid of all these lovely uh, rainbow dots, whatever you call them. <laughs> Okay. Now I'm checking it. And like I said before, that's it doesn't really look that fuzzy, the, the, the picture. That's just the compression from the video uh, capture that I used in that, that halo. Okay, now the main job is to get the background neutral. But also, what you want to do is you want to keep this area right here. I'm just saying, I'm drawing a circle. You, you don't want to touch that because you want to. You're going to use that later to help blend in without ruining the glow. So now I'm going to do an inverse. Select inverse, just like you would do with the ex, uh, exterm, integrating exterminator. And once again, here I use dust and scratches to get rid of this. You guys are going to be dreaming about it. <laughs> dust and scratches. It's like magic. And before I tried it using this called an FFT uh, plugin. I don't know if you ever heard of that. I forget what it's, it's something furious tool. I forget what the other F stands for, but it, it still doesn't work getting rid of star trails. At least the ones I tried. I tried like three different ones. Okay, so now what I'm doing is gradient, gradient exterminator again. I'm doing it medium. Remember the goal also keep that green glow. You really can't see it from this view but it's still there. There, I was trying to get rid of another uh, stripe. Okay, let me just fast forward a little bit here. Okay, now I'm trying to get rid of how it's like that army green or very dark green while maintaining the bright green and then getting rid of the black thing, but you can't crop it because the two the two uh, images have to match the star background and this one. So I'm trying to see what's going to work here. My trusty old camera raw filter wasn't working there. Oh, it worked a little to help with the green, with the comet. Also, there's a way of getting rid of, rid of banding, but I'll do it another time on here. I can explain that so you don't have those circular bands. But the bands on this, there's really no bands on the final one. Like I said, it's just the compression. So now I'm just resorting to the good old paintbrush. And I'm keeping the tolerance pretty, uh, pretty low. But I'll keep it high when I go around like... I'm leaving this part alone, but ar around here, I'm going to put the 100% below of the flow and the opacity 100%. Doing 
to make it black. Brian, can I ask you another question? Sure. You yep. had this posted on YouTube, right? Yes. Uh, we should definitely post a link. So if oh. someone wants to go through the presentation. Oh, yes. You, you uh, can actually get it through my website, too, through astronebula.com. And that if you go to tutorials, it has all my tutorials on there. I got, I got to add more, but the YouTube video is right on the post. Okay, thank you. Yep. So now I'm, I think the flow is at, no, I'm still at 100% flow because I'm not really going, touching near the, con well, I did there almost. Yeah, in the tutorial, I mentioned a much more detail, like just a lot more detailed. Not a lot more, but it's a bit more. This is where I adjust the flow because I'm trying to be very careful around the glow of the comet. Now this I could have spent more time because I did a, a redo of this from my original uh, picture. So I was just showing you how to do it. So it's not, it wasn't perfect, but it's good enough for this. Now there's all different ways to do it too. So you don't just be set on what I'm doing with, with the paintbrush and that. If you have other ways with Photoshop and just like, like with other programs too, so. But the, like the main goal is to just get the comet like that, and the background try to get it as the same like like dark neutral color that it is. Let's see. See now I'm just making sure everything's all neat. Okay, I'm just gonna let it play through. It's just about done. So, okay, now even after I merge it, I can still work on this layer to clean it up after I combine. There, I was just describing how I usually work in Photoshop. Sometimes and instead of doing adjustment layers, I just find it easier just to duplicate a layer. If you don't like it, just uncheck it, throw it out. It's a quicker uh, process for me at least. My background is actually, I'm a graphic uh, designer. Like I've been working with Photoshop since the late 90s. And uh, so the methods I use are just the stuff that I was taught, I guess. Now they have all these new features there. I, I actually, I just, let me, uh, I was talking and I missed an important part. Okay, now what I'm doing is I'm combining it. Now, what you wanna do, actually, this one is isolated. I'm cutting this or copying it. I'm going to paste it on the the star background that we worked on before, this one. There we go. I paste it. And now where it says normal, I choose screen. And if you're doing uh, uh, LRGB, you choose luminosity, if you know what I mean. But uh, the screen just blends it right through. So now it's just a matter of uh, touch-ups. So now I'm doing, oh, I'm just rotating it. Cause the comet's going that way.
so now uh i know that there's stuff i gotta clean in here and that's what i'm talking about in the, during the tutorial right now so now i think what i do is i try to show you like what's left when i uh just blow out a curve or, or maybe i'm just doing the background there Just adjusting the glow. That's a little too blue, I think. <laughs> and I go back. See, now I'm showing you the stuff that I missed. You can see the stuff there that I didn't clean up. So now I'm just getting it the best I can with, the, with this right now. So I believe I adjust the stars one more time on here. Nope. Okay, that's the end of that one. And then you can always subscribe if you like me. <laughs> okay, so we're going to exit out of here and I'll show you. This was actually the, the finished one that I did the first time. And that was done on March 25th. As you can see, there's there's a little banding, which I should have got rid of, but and then the first one, this was on April 1st. And okay, so that's it for me. So I'm going to stop sharing. Cool. Hey, uh, Eric, I think you got a couple more questions over there. Yep. So go ahead. I'm looking at it mainly as a discussion, primarily from you, Alex. Do you see any questions? What do, what do we know? Um, yeah, there was a, okay, first off, when did you take these pictures? I took uh, the one I was working on, uh, March 25th. March 25th, that was fairly yeah. late. Uh, that No, that was, that was really that enough. Yeah. yeah, that's when it was still promised to be uh, to show it. Yeah, it was and, still going to be bigger than Mars at a full moon or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and then the second one was uh, April first, I believe it was. Okay. And well, then after I took another one, you you can see on my website when uh, I actually took a black, I inverted it with uh, two. I just did a, a regular mo mono uh, shoot on it, and you can see. Uh, how it's starting to break up in that one <laughs> a mm. little bit. Then after I read, I read uh, uh, Comet Swans coming out. <laughs> so then I moved my interest onto that now after it's broken up. John at Ostra wants to know if there, if you'd like to comment about um, uh, exposure time versus comet speed, et cetera. What do you know about that? Uh, we just we covered that earlier, Alex. Well, we might have, but um, do you want you want anything? Oh, to yeah. add, 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 go ahead. Oh yeah, with the exposure time, what I found was, I would say you want to keep it the comet under under a minute because I did that with the red channel was a minute, and I didn't see any issues. But I wouldn't push past, past a minute, I don't think. Because yeah. you'll see as in another video on my website, the the comment moving. Like, uh, I could show you right now if you wanted to see real quick. You can see go how ahead. it... Go ahead, yeah, just you, start, start sharing again and, and go for it. Yeah, you can see how, actually how fast uh, it moves in, in five hours. Okay. 
Okay. Okay, this is a very short video. It's like a minute. There's the comment right there. This is over a five hour period. We don't have your sharing. We don't have your sharing yet. Oh, well, I'm sorry. Let's see here. Okay. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> I apologize for that one. Okay. So this is over five hours, and I, I believe it was 300 frames or, so, or something of 15 or 20 second subs. Uh, and now RGB again. Oh, no, this is just mono, just regular. Okay, grayscale. Grayscale. If I had a, uh, actually, I do have a color one, but I figured that just to get the best signal to with the short subs. Mm -hmm. It was but, moving pretty good. I I, I got yeah. a few pictures of it, and I tried it both with LRGB, and then I came back um, mm -hmm. a month later or something like that, or a week later, a few weeks later, and did it with um, one shot color. Much easier to do in one shot color. Yeah, <laughs> actually, ironically, I um, bought a. Uh, let me. How, how many subs sharing. did you use all together? That one was like around three hundred single frames. It must have been twenty or thirty seconds. That tw I usually don't go higher right. than tw yep. Oh, uh, you're muted, oh. or am I muted? Uh, actually, mine is not muted. No, you're think. both you're both good. I can hear you. Yep. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah, we can't hear Alex. Yeah, it's not showing that he's muted though. He might have muted his uh, physical microphone. Yep. But the, actually, the other day, I, I tried to capture the, the asteroid, but uh, it went too low where I couldn't see. There was a house in front of me. <laughs> oh, too bad. Mm -hmm. I finally locked onto it, too. With the, I got the RA in the deck, and I punched it in Sequence Generator Pro. But then all of a sudden, <laughs> too low. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've not been able to capture. Uh, I, I didn't get any of um, of the last comet because uh, it's mm. behind my house and behind a tree and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, so I didn't get any of that, which I'm sad about. <laughs> Hopefully, it was Swan now. So, I mean, it's going to be low in the horizon. Yeah, it looks like it's still um, below it's, the horizon. Yeah. Uh, at night, right now, is it going to get higher? Yes. Yeah, uh, yeah. Actually, I uh, I was on, I, I, was, yet. <laughs> I was check I was checking it out when Stellarium, and uh, it was it'll get up to like twenty degrees. I think. I mean, okay. it's not not high, but it'll be enough where. What's your latitude? Oh, I'm at forty. In, okay. I'm in the Philadelphia yeah. area. Um, Alex, do you hear? Oh yeah. Okay. We had a couple of questions. I think, uh, did you talk about your flats and uh, total? How many subs did you use in your experiment there? Oh, uh, do, are you, do you mean the last one I just showed? Whatever. Just how many? How many subs do you think a guy needs to take oh, that picture? Oh, for a five-hour animation. Yeah. Oh, I, I used about three hundred thirty seconds. I guess I got to divide uh, five hours by. 30 seconds or 20 seconds. Well, five hours is 300 minutes. So, yeah, uh, that sounds right. Subs, yeah, 300 subs. subs not, yep. Not counting downloads and stuff like that. And when did you, how'd you do your flats and um, how you use flats and everything? Oh, yeah. That? Actually, that one was, that was actually, a, I did a little trick there. Uh, I got a, I stacked them all together. And uh, what I did was I used the same process I used with the video I showed you for the green one, you know, the, the colored version, the original one. And what I did was I got rid of, the, I used my procedure to get rid of the smeared comet. And uh, then I had one, uh, one master thing with all the flats and the subs. And then what I did was, let me take your, uh, 
I took uh, 200. Oh, yeah, I made an action in Photoshop to uh, to do uh, what was just to bring out the detail in it. Okay. And then I stacked them uh, all together into individual frames. And then I ran it through, uh, was it, I think I put it in a Adobe uh, Premiere then, but any kind of video editing program could do it. So, but e basically each sub had its own flat. And I did it manually, actually, I remember now with uh, Deep Sky Stacker. That took about like 10 hours, <laughs> mm -hmm. but, but uh, I was having fun. Okay. I think we've got through all the questions and the comments and everything else like that. So we're doing really good. Um, if there's any more questions, please put them in. Um, and I want to thank you all for being here tonight. Uh, come back next week and we'll be talking a little bit about um, how the, how you can get your, um, how you can do some citizen science and find a comet or find a meteors coming over your house. I've, every night my, camera takes pictures of dozens and dozens of, of meteors that would ever be, otherwise go um, unnoticed and they're charted out and graphed and the people, the really smart scientists get a hold of it and do some work with it. I'm going to let them talk about it next week. Uh, Toga, you about ready to take us out? Okay. Good night, everybody. And we'll see you again next week. Okay. Good night. See you.